Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll give everybody one more minute before we officially get started. We were just chatting about transit. <laughs> yes. Not, it's wonderful to have, not super reliable. We don't need to go into details. <laughs> Well, maybe we can get started. I think we've got about most most people who registered are here. So I am Orby Dingwall. I'm Christine Nielsen. And we're talking today about one of our favorite topics, which is critical appraisal. My favorite. <laughs> As you're searching? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Those are our two, our two favorite things. We're so glad that you joined us today. Uh, so first thing, if you've been to our webinars before, you know they always start the same way. Um, we wanna make sure that you know how to ask us questions in case you have a question or need to ask something for clarification. So you need to find your go-to webinar um, menu. If you've lost it, it should be in this like snowflake picture um, in the bottom of your screen. So you can click on that. And then um, you may also need to click on this little orange arrow to open things out to the right hand side. Uh, and then beside the questions, uh, you click on the down arrow and then it'll enter the question box and you can pop in those questions um, or comments that you have there. So also just getting used to our software, we'll launch a poll and ask, were you able to locate that questions box. So we'll have everybody vote. This is good. Okay, so a couple people saying, wait, 80 and 20, oh, 83% voted. A couple people saying, weren't quite sure. So just, if you need to, so you need to pull up your go-to webinar box. If you've lost it, look for that kind of blue snowflake oh, somebody does not have sound there's no sound um can is i guess can anyone hear us yeah just confirm in the chat box if you can hear us although if you can't hear us you can't hear the question either so where is um, why can't we respond to this oh, okay. 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 Oh, some some people can hear. Okay, that's that's good. Um, all right, Orby is troubleshooting here. Well, I want that sound. I don't hear me. Oh, because she left. That's oh, okay, okay, okay. That would be what. Okay, so we're just um, getting that going. Hopefully we can, uh, everybody will be able to hear us. So we've got four objectives today. Again, if you are joining us um, from a previous session, we always make sure you know about our services from MyNet. We're going to talk about critical appraisal tools you can use all day, every day. And then also critical appraisal specific to types of research, because depending on the type of research, then you'll want to be looking at it differently. And then also we wanna make sure that you know about a couple of um, in-depth workshops on critical appraisals that you can do as follow-up if you're interested. Oh, okay. And thanks um, for the comment about the how to get to the chat box. We will definitely take a look into that and make sure our instructions are up to date. So MyNet is Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. And it's a service that we provide to staff at Manitoba Health, fee-for-service physicians in Manitoba, and the participating regional health authorities. So this is our great team. Um, Christine and I are your primary librarians. Cheryl is your primate, li 
primary uh, library assistant, and Gail also helps us out. So if you don't already have a library card with us, please make sure you register for one. Um, our webinars here are free and are open to anyone, but it's really helpful if you have a library card because then when you need something, which for most people is a couple times a year, but for others it's on a weekly basis, all are fine. Um, we're happy that you use this when you need to, uh, but having that library card is helps us connect with you and also then make sure that when you need something, we can just, we don't have to go through that formality because we've already done it. Uh, we have a new web address that launched in September. Same looking website, just different websites. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure you update your bookmarks. And we have four core services. Uh, so if you ever need information on something and whether that I need to know everything about salt room therapy, uh, that's a spoiler for one of our examples later, then we will send you everything we can find on that. You also might just wanna say, hey, um, I just want to know, like, what's the deal with this thing that I heard about in a session? Um, and I just want, like, a couple of review articles on it. We'll happily do that, whatever it is you need. Um, and it can also be, like, you, you know, search Google and search resources, and you're like, I am not finding this. Can you guys please help? We do that, too. Then if you ever need full text articles, it doesn't matter how you came across them, whether you um, heard about them in, from a friend, whether you got them from the results of a literature search, whether you found them on Google, anytime you hit that paywall that says, please pay us $80, do not do that. Just send us a message, we can send you that article. Um, we do a current awareness where you get an email each week of new research on, on a topic that's of interest to you. And we do sessions like this. We also help coordinate the provincial up-to-date license. So talking now about critical appraisal. When should you critically appraise information? So we've got a little poll here that we'll have you fill out. So we'll give you a couple minutes, or not minutes, we'll give you like oh, yeah. one minute, yeah. Okay, only a few people have voted. I know it's, yeah, they're kind of longer too. Okay, we'll give you a little bit longer here. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Great. Okay. So most people have said anytime you, when should you do critical appraisal? Anytime you're presented with information. That's the correct answer. I mean, it's also correct to say when making decisions about patients or policies, um, the most, this was a, the most correct answer was <laughs> always. And this can really be from anything from, you know, there's an article published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, you want to look critically at that information. Similarly to like your child told you that today's the day that they can wear pajamas to school. Um, you need to critically appraise all like all the inputs, right? And sometimes we don't think about, oh, I've done a critical appraisal, but that's what you're doing when you're sort of validating or, or attempting to validate uh, different kinds of information. So we like this, or I like it, and Christine didn't like object when I put it in the slides. I like it well enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's a rave review coming from Christine. She likes it well enough. Uh, so this is the cycle of evidence-informed healthcare. So um, when you're using evidence to inform your uh, practice and your um, work in health, uh, these are the different steps that you can go through. So the first is to clearly define your question or your problem. And we've noted on these slides uh, about, we've got whole other MyNet sessions. Um, there are some, uh, you can watch the recordings if you're interested. Um, and defining that question is really important. And sometimes it might just be, hey, I want some information about um, what's a sufficient amount of exercise in a day. Well, that question, that's not super clearly defined. You need to know what are you thinking of as exercise? 
what population are you talking about, right? Because kids need more exercise than um, the elderly and all kinds of things in between. So clearly define that question is thing number one. Thing number two is then you search, our favorite part, uh, search for the evidence. And we've got like three or four different sessions um, that can help you kind of uh, broaden your toolbox and your, to and your skill sets on how to search for that kind of information. Um, and then once you've done that search and you're finding some results, then you need to critically appraise um, the information you found and the sources that you used. So here, oh, and I'll mention, we will, um, at the end of today's session, we will send out a copy of the slides we're using today. So then you can keep those and, um, and refer to them. So uh, critical appraisal is the process of assessing the quality of study methods in order to determine if findings are trustworthy, meaningful, and relevant to your situation. Critical appraisal helps you answer the question, were the methods used in this study good enough that I can be confident in the findings? Now there's other definitions that get at other different things, but there's a lot of really great components to this definition to set the stage. Now, one of um, our favorite days of the whole year is April Fool's Day with everyone, the best day for critical appraisal um, because people are actually critically appraising everything that they're reading. <laughs> As members of society, we wish everyone was doing that every day, but um, that's good. So we, we talked about how you should be critically appraising all the information coming at you, um, but we're just curious. There's no right or wrong answer here. We're curious about when you are actually doing critical appraisal. So we've got some little... Uh, options here. We'll let you cast your votes. Okay, and the first set of results that's coming in, it seems like we've got some um, either highly skeptical people <laughs> or people who are, you know, quite confident in their critical appraisal skills. Lots of people dedicated to um, you know, when they're making decisions that are impacting um, patients or policies that they're using then. And some people here who are just like looking for the basics. Awesome. Uh, now, one of my favorite critical appraisal tools is the CRAP test. And this isn't specific to research information. It's something, I mean, we can use it for research, but it's also something you can use for all kinds of information, which is why I like it so much. It's easy to use and um, really, you know, broadly applicable. So it's pretty easy. Uh, CRAP stands for Currency, Reliability, Authority, and Purpose or Point of View. So not an exhaustive list, but enough to just kind of have you thinking a bit critically as you go through. So for currency, you're thinking about things about how recent is this information? And is it current enough for your, your topic? Um, has the information been revised or changed since it was first released? And just like an easy thing, especially when you're checking for things online, do the links work? So we've got some examples here. This is an example from PubNet. And um, the title of this article is the quality, the quality of Dietary Information on the World Wide Web. Now, if that's what you're searching, you're like, yes, I want to know about this. But then you look at it and it's published in 1997. Um, now, as we all know, the internet is slightly different today than it was in 1997. Probably this is not recent enough for you. It depends though. Like maybe you are interested in how it's changed over time, in which case it would be. Yeah. Right, it's all about, about your, your own particular needs. Yeah, and at each time. And again, that's um, going back to that evidence circle. Uh, defining your question is really important. Maybe you do need to go back historically, maybe not. Um, we also have this one, um, which is about the coronavirus. And this one is from 2003 from the New England Journal of Medicine. So again, uh, maybe depending on what you're doing, this is going to be relevant um, or, or, not. or not. Now, reliability is the next, is the R in CRAB. 
And is the, this is about, is the information supported by evidence? Can you verify where this came from? Are there references to support the quotations? Is it peer reviewed? Is the information balanced or is it primarily opinion? Um, now, sometimes you might find an opinion piece and that might be a great source. You might have lots to go on from that. Other times you're looking for a higher level of evidence. So it depends on what you're looking for and sometimes what's available too. So this is, um, this is our salt room example. Um, uh, this one says, this is one of when, if you look up the uh, therapy or salt room therapy, the side effects of it, and you ask Google, and I mean, a lot of times Google gives us great answers and answers our questions right away. Um, but other times it gives us things like this, which says, since dry salt therapy is 100% natural and drug free, there are no negative side effects. And us critical appraisers are like, whoa, <laughs> just because something is 100% natural and drug free doesn't mean there aren't side effects. Um, so we would say, not reliable to be making claims like that. Like clearly somebody has a point of view that they, um, and especially from a, a website called breathesaltrooms.com, um, they're trying to sell you something or get you into yeah. something. So, so it, it might be that there are no side effects, but we're not taking this as the reliable source. You might want to confirm it. Yeah, or dive a little deeper. Um, this one too, this one is about uh, alternative pre-approval and novel therapies for the treatment of anthrax. And what was this one about, Christine? Oh, it's under the methods. Oh, under the methods. Oh, I just need to click one more. That's right. So, I mean, read through this, seems okay. <laughs> and then we've got the librarian note of yikes, <laughs> because we look at the method and it says, a literature search was conducted using the University of Manitoba search engine. There is no such thing. There's no such thing. That is not a, that is not a, that is not a thing. Um, or that's not a correct, or an, a completely precise and accurate description of what they've done. The, um, yeah. The, they looked in the catalog is what they did. We, yeah. That's our, that's the our library catalog. Thing. Yeah. But they need to describe that. So we would say, I mean, we would still, we wouldn't just throw it out completely because they didn't have a precise description in the abstract, but we're suspicious of their reporting here, yeah. not and necessarily of what they've done or their findings. Or maybe they don't actually understand what it is that they've done, and maybe they could have done something different that would have been better. Yeah. So uh, there's you know many different ways we can look at the reliability of things. Sometimes for fun, Christine sends me these little things that she's found and then we save them and then that's why we laugh at so much <laughs> um, in them. And then uh, moving on to authority, who is the author? And what are their credentials? Are they reputable or qualified to write on that topic? They might be a really reputable person, but maybe not on that topic. Also, then we need to look at who is the publisher or the sponsor and what are their interests. And also, um, are there advertisements on the website? And sometimes I'm on really good websites and they've got all these ads and I think, ugh, why are they doing this? Um, so not necessarily a, it's not always binary, right? Oh, there are ads, therefore it's out. But definitely sites that have less ads tend to be of higher quality, not always. And then also, what does the URL tell you, right? So we know .edu, is often um, an educational website. .gov is often a government one. You know, .pizza is probably something that somebody has just paid for on their own. Um, and again, not binary, not necessarily, oh, .edu, therefore, totally reliable and authoritative, not always, but just one of those tools that you wanna be, one of those things you wanna be looking at. So an example here about who is the author, this is a blog post, Weighty Matters, and it's by an associate professor um, at the University of Ottawa. And I mean, it's just a blog post. Most of the time it's his opinion, but it's a really great source. I mean, still, every time he's writing, I'm critically appraising, but um, you know, blogs can be great sources for, of information. And then purpose and point of view. So the final part of the crap test is this fact or opinion or propaganda? 
Is the creator or author trying to sell you something? And is it biased? Um, you know, with a certain political, ideological, cultural, et cetera, kind of point of view. So we've got here, again, a result from PubMed. The magic pill, the branding of impotence and the positioning of Viagra as its solutions, as, as its solution through edutainment. Um, so basically what we're seeing here is kind of, you know, they're looking at Viagra. Now, anytime we're looking at drugs, we want to look at was this funded by a drug company? Who are these people and what are their interests? Were they given money from a drug company? Um, and just like really looking into, you know, because often articles about Viagra are trying to entice you to use Viagra. I think in this case, this is more uh, the opposite side. Mm. So, uh, which is not to say that what they present is invalid, but they're also trying to trying to sell you something, just not. They're trying to yeah the same make thing. you not take yeah. Viagra. Um, so you're looking for those opportunities for balance. And sometimes too, so if you find one that's um, definitely like in this case, it pro Viagra, you also then want to make sure you're looking for something that balances that opinion. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can find high levels of evidence for one side, very low levels for the other side, and then there's your answer. Case in point, um, vaccines, right? The, vac the evidence against vaccines is very low, and the evidence for vaccines is very high. Um, so yeah, the point of views from the healthy home economist, which is, you know, we just found that through Google, um, versus uh, more authoritative articles that you find in PubMed. So just keeping that in your thought, right? Because sometimes we think, oh gosh, like is, is this safe? Is this drug safe? Is this the standard of practice? When you're searching for a really specific thing, sometimes then you'll have that confirmation bias where they say, yeah, this is the thing. Then you should also reflect back and say, hey, I didn't find any that said, no, 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 that's not the thing. Um, then you should look for the counter narrative on it. Uh, so crap test is just like an easy one to keep in your head. Currency, reliability, author, purpose, point of view. Um, there are other sources. So I also really like this. Um, this is designed by the International um, Federation of Library Associations. And it's a nice, you know, you might want to like post it on, on your, um, on the, you know, board beside your desk. Uh, there's also lots of translations available. So if you wanted to use, have a teaching example, you can um, provide this in different languages. Um, there's lots of other tools that exist to help you do critical appraisal. So there's also some really easy fact-checking resources. And these are more for, or, um, so Snopes is a popular one, and you can go to snopes.com and they adver advertise themselves as the internet's go-to source for discerning what is true and what is total nonsense. Often there's much in between. Um, but they do also, I mean, so this is good for, I mean, you just see some sensationalized headline or even some maybe not quite sensationalized headline, some headline, and you're like, wait, is that true? Uh, you can go here and then they will have done um, a critical analysis of that piece. But they also have a specific section on medical information. So an example here is, um, is China building a hospital in 10 days to treat coronavirus patients? Um, and they've got this clip. So that was something that was published on February 3rd. Um, and so then they outline for you um, specifically what the claim is, and then they've rated it as true. I mean, much of their stuff is false. Um, and then they go through with a description. So it's really nice. They don't have everything, but um, it can be just a really easy, quick, you know, pop it in and, um, and they provide it to you. Another uh, really nice one is called Health Feedback. This is one Christine just alerted me to, uh, which is a worldwide network of scientists sorting fact from fiction in health and medicine media coverage. Their goal is to help readers know which news to trust. So they provide, I mean, many different kinds of things, but two of the primary things they provide are article reviews. Um, which just help you to say, is this article consistent with the latest thinking of knowledge and science? So we know sometimes there's these, um, I mean, in the 24-hour news cycle, news organizations are always trying to look for the newest thing. 
And so an article will be published and they will just like spring on it and not do their due diligence and really get into the science behind it and everything done before. So um, health feedback will then look at and say, actually, you know, this new study tells us exactly the same as all the other ones. Or, or it is right on money. Right? Yeah, 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 for sure. And, um, and then it also says, would experts in this field endorse the main message of this article? So that's really helpful. And then they also do claim reviews, which are similar to kind of Snopes, and they do like, this is inaccurate, or this is unsupported, or this is partially correct. So some of them are, um, you can see here about like, uh, no HIV insertions were not identified in the 2019 coronavirus, contrary to claims based on questionable bioinformatics study. Their verdict is, this is just inaccurate. So inaccurate, inaccurate, inaccurate. Um, the DTaP vaccine causes SIDS, inaccurate. So I mean, sometimes you might, it's just a nice confirmation for sometimes things you already knew um, or uh, for things maybe that you weren't too sure about. And not saying that we would ever trust, you know, just go to this and say, oh, they've said it's inaccurate, boom, I'm done. Um, I mean, you could just obviously read through further. Yeah, and they do give more information than just inaccurate. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. They explain. Uh, yeah, you can click into, into each of these. Um, and then here's one of the uh, sort of reviews, which is about Manuka honey and the potent antibacterial activity, even against, um, anyway, against honey and bacteria. And they say it's partially correct. And so what they go on to describe here is that, and you can see that in sort of the purple thing with the idea light bulb at the bottom, which is saying that yes, Manuka honey um, is effective against antibac is an effective antibacterial agent, but not against like, but not to the extent that this article has hyped it to be. It is not the you know the be all end all. So that's helpful. Um, we're gonna. Pause there for a moment in case anyone has. So those are like tools that you can use on a regular basis, not just for health information or health research. Christine's gonna now take us hard into how yes. we critically appraise research. Okay, for the fun part. The fun part, yeah. All right, so we've got another poll um, just to kind of take temperature of the room to see whether or not you've heard of uh, appraisal checklists for uh, research evidence. Oh, they've just been waiting. <laughs> they've been waiting in anticipation, like this is this is what people are here for. This is what you're here for. Okay. Awesome. So mo most people have voted. Um, a lot of people say no, some people have said yes. So um, I guess we are all in the right place then. Well, I can switch back to the slides here. Um, yeah, and just like Orby said earlier, there there's kind of the, the two, I'll say levels, right? You know, this is this is a little more of the hardcore stuff. Um, and we're gonna start with uh, a program called CASP. It starts it uh, starts it stands for Critical Appraisal Skills Program, and this is a a group. Their their whole deal is educating uh, health professionals um, and and other academic type folks uh, how to critically appraise. Um, different types of research. And they have lots of useful things on their website. Um, they've got a glossary, so if you're not sure about some terms, you can look things up there. Um, but we're going to focus more on the checklists. Do you want to mention about the handout we're going to send? You? Oh, yeah. Um, we have a handout. Uh, <laughs> we're going to send it to you afterwards. Um, and it's going to kind of give you an overview of uh, what we talked about today. So all the, the things Orbe has discussed, with, like crap and um, the the different snopes and yeah checking things and that and then um there's also urls and stuff for cast um as well as some others other that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes too yeah okay so um we're we're focused in on on the checklists today so they have for various kinds of studies because um different studies are done differently like there's different methods different things you have to consider um and you know, if, if you aren't really familiar, then then you might kind of go, oh yeah, randomized control trials are the best. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, I mean, some are well done and some are less well done, okay? 
so oh, here we go. Um, so this is just a screenshot of their page where they've got the checklists. Um, and you can see um, this is the Knowledge Hub. And underneath that, we've got the checklist, the glossary. They have useful links um, and bibliography about their own program as well. Yep, shoot. Not a real website. Okay, <laughs> don't scroll down the page. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you can see that they've got kind of two versions of all the checklists. They've one you can print out. So if you're, uh, you're like me, you're you're an analog person living in a digital world, you can do that. Um, or you can uh, use the electronic version as well. Okay. Oops. Speaking of analog, there we go. Um, yeah. So really. Each checklist has three sections, and they're all getting at the same overall idea, but um, in, in ways specific to those kinds of studies. So uh, first, you want to know, is this study valid? Um, did they use the appropriate methods? Um, you know, is, is, the, is the research methodology sound? But also, I would extend that to things like, did they only use men? We know that in certain health conditions, you know, they talk about like heart attacks and stuff, women and men experience things differently. So that's something to think about, right? So, um, or, or university students, <laughs> they only use yeah. university students because they're the same as everyone else in the world. Yeah. Um, so, so, so questions around how they've done the study. Um, the second is, you know, what are the actual results, right? Um, we, sometimes you hear people talk about significance. So there's two kinds of significance. There's statistical significance, uh, which means that's like, yes, there is a legitimate difference between X and Y, but there's also clinical significance. It's like, does this actual difference make enough of a difference in someone's care, right? Like, is it is it something that's gonna matter, really? Okay, um, and then there's also uh, whether or not this is gonna help you, right? So if there is a study and it is done um, in Australia, maybe, <laughs> you know, it, it could be applicable. Um, but you have to think about um, the population, um, the, the context, and your own context, and make a judgment call on whether or not that's going to be useful for you, right? I think a good example, you know, of that is, yeah, there's many, many things from the UK or America or Australia that we can often use, and some things we just don't even look at on first glance, like if we're talking about sexual health or preventing sexually um, sexually transmitted diseases, if we're looking at information out of Africa, we deal with things very differently here versus there. So, I mean, sometimes you can take it, sometimes not. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have a few examples. Um, and this actually goes back to that health feedback site that Orby mm -hmm. was talking about. Um, and so this was a web report about a scientific study, right? So, and I don't know if any of you saw this, Federal study finds marijuana 100 per time, times less toxic than alcohol and safer than tobacco. Good news, everybody. Great. Um, and so they've they've actually gone and looked at the article and said, okay, uh, I don't know if you can read this, but it's like very low in the scientific credibility. Uh, Negative 1.3. Yeah, scientific credibility. So they 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 looked at the article and either took some liberties or maybe. I don't know who this person is who posted it. Maybe they don't have the same level of expertise that's required in order to interpret it, right? So um, yeah, so there's, I mean, I think generally, if you see something that is like, stop the presses, yeah. this solves everything. Not that, true. That's, <laughs> that's a red flag. But, um, but yeah, so are these results valid? And in this case, we have been able to check and it's like, no, not so much. Um, we've also got this one. This is one that I read, one of those that I found and sent to Orby. So, uh, for, for fun, for this fun. is what we do for fun. Um, and Orby's head explodes because she goes, oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, so this one is about the decriminal, decriminalization of drug use, right? So this is more of a policy kind of, uh, question. And so it says here, so that this systematic review of the literature, which is a particular type, study type, um, they, uh, had seven articles, but if you look in the line above, it says they only looked for things that were published between 2016 and 2017. Um, 
And I can tell you that a systematic review does not limit itself to that kind of time frame. Um, you might, if you've, I don't know if you've read through this or not, but the uh, way down at the bottom, the evidence needs to be more widespread in order to support the case for decriminalization. You don't say, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, clearly they, they have not followed through with proper methodology for a systematic review. Um, now, it could be a matter of this is not the right type of method to use for this question, um, as opposed to like they're just not good at what they do. Um, could be a bit of both, I don't know. But yeah, it's this is this is one you might kind of pause and go, mm, I don't know. Um, they they might have some interesting things to say about what they found in that two year period, but I don't think you can generalize based on that as to like all of what is available on that topic. Yeah, right. So not so, not so valid. Okay, this one is a what are the results? We've got um, you know it breaks my heart. <laughs> it's like every, th every time they bring something, it's like, oh, you know, the diet drinks are going to kill you because of this. Um, in this one, it's about, it's about the actual carbonation, right? And so it says, this, in this, this is a study that was reported on, right? So this is the discussion of the article. So um, if you look in the, in the text at the bottom, it says that this is a, a study that was done on rats, and this is what they found. And it's like, well, okay. It was done on rats. Mm. Can you generalize? Maybe, maybe not. Um, if you actually go to the, the the full text of the article, you see they they took like a, a handful of of human subjects as well. But again, it's like is a handful of, is enough to to say that? Yeah. yeah. And if you come across one of these two, and maybe you do, you know, you use Snopes or you use the I keep for the health the health one. Uh, health feedback. Health feedback. And you're not finding it or you just want to read the whole article which is always a good start um, and you can just send this to us and say can you find what the article that they're talking about and we'll send you that article absolutely okay um the uh the fourth thing about is it actually going to help you is this relevant to your situation um this here is a report out of public health england uh, and wow, what a title, Rapid Review of Evidence of the Impact on Health Outcomes of NHS Commissioned Health Services for People in Secure and Detained Settings to Inform Future Health and Interventions and Prioritization in England. Maybe we should find a shorter title for next example. <laughs> maybe. Um, now, maybe this is relevant. Maybe it's not. You need to be the judge of that yourself, right? So they are specifically looking at England. And I mean, they're very upfront about that. Um, so you would need to think about, okay, so the way that they do things there, is that the same as we do things here? What are the differences? Would those differences make a difference? Yeah. Okay, so on to the next one. Um, there's an instrument called AGREE2, and that stands for stuff. Uh, that's appraisal of guidelines, research, and evaluation. Uh, and the two is just like this is version two. Um, and so this is used to kind of get, get a sense of whether or not this guideline was developed in a methodologically rigorous way, right? Um, and so this, this, is, this is a kind of a, a checklist thing as well. Okay. So um, there are six areas. So scope and purpose, whether or not stakeholders were involved, um, the rigor of development, so what's, what's their process, uh, the clarity of presentation, uh, applicability, and Editorial independence, right? So we've kind of come ac uh, across this before um, in our talk. So it's like you know those those nutrition studies that are funded by Coca-Cola, right? Like some some people are hesitant to accept these, um, and um, I guess that's that's a whole other topic uh, for discussion. But whether or not um, this was influenced by interested parties, right? I mean beyond general stakeholder involvement, okay? Um, there's another tool called AMSTAR, and it is for systematic abuse. So um, we've got a link up there, and I'm gonna flip over real quick, and that here's the, the article about it. Um, and so this is, again, it's to look at systematic reviews, and there are different types of systematic reviews. Um, 
Many of them only look at randomized control trials, but those are not necessarily appropriate for every kind of study, right? In terms of practicality, ethics, you know, various reasons. Um, so AMSAR actually includes um, non-randomized studies as well. Right. Christine, do you want to, on the previous slide, I had mentioned that um, this is a validated appraisal tool. Yes. Can you talk about what it takes to be validated? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, just generally speaking, there, there's there's a whole process um, that, that is involved. Uh, it's not just, you know, two people sitting in the room going, I think we should look at this. Um, they have, they test things out, they look for um, kind of reliability, over time, uh, different different people using the tool, whether or not it actually is consistent, that kind of thing. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, um, I just bring it up like that. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, that's exactly what I meant. I was teaching a group of students a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about how these kinds of checklists are developed. It's not just like, oh, well, Orby feels that these are the things that you need to look at and think about when you're reviewing something that actually yeah, whole teams of methodologists and epidemiologists and all and statisticians that they all go through each of those lines and says like, when you look at who the author is, does that make a difference? When you look at if there's editorial in independence, does that make a difference? And I shared this with these grad students and this one guy, he was like, wait, like people actually, that's what they do? Like that's what their research is? I'm like, yeah, often they're librarians too. And he was like, whoa. Hard pass on this. <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Too much. Like, I don't want to go into that field. <laughs> and who would? But I think it's fascinating. <laughs> anyway, so just there, you know, that um, uh, there is some actual evidence saying when you look at these elements, that it does, it can make a difference in, um, in whatever you're assessing. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah. And here's, here's the 16 items in MSTAR. So things like, did they um, perform the study selection in duplicate? Did like, so one of the, the deals with, with proper systematic review procedure mm -hmm. is that there are two, sometimes there's more than two, yeah. uh, independent people, they look through the things and they, they, they say, okay, does this fit the criteria? Yes, no, maybe. Um, and the idea being, if there's kind of, Disagreement. Thank you. I was going to say yeah. conflict, but disagreement. Then, then that needs to be addressed, right? But um, so if if there's kind of like a we all sit down together and look at it together approach, then um, there might be some bias. Yeah. Influence. Yeah. yeah. Um, Orby is like super. No, Christine. This can... one has to be included. It has to be included. She influences my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not um, usually. No. <laughs> uh, just uh, so, you know, did they, did they describe, you know, in enough detail what they included, you know, just, and, and a lot of this is, sounds very straightforward, but you would be surprised at, at the amount of stuff that is published where it's like, mm, they just, they just didn't do this piece or they didn't do that piece, right? Um, so this is all getting at whether or not this is um, done properly. Yeah. All right. So lots of tools. And um, the Duke University Medical Center Library and Archives, they, they're, they're a good source to look at. Um, they have similar tools for appraising evidence. Um, they've got worksheets, uh, all kinds of uh, nifty stuff if you're interested in, in having a look at um, more resources that way. Okay, and likewise, the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools, um, they've got kind of like a little online course, for lack of a better way to put it, it's not like a course, I guess um, there, modules, yeah. modules. Um, and um, you can learn more about these things and it, they, they actually give you a certificate, which is kind of fun. Um, so you could go to your supervisor and go, hey, look, now I know how to critically appraise guidelines. I'm awesome. So um, we're all oh, right on track for time. Uh, we have one more, one more poll. Um, and this is kind of to get a sense of whether or not you feel this was um, I good feel enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel better about whether or not you can critically appraise information? Um, I mean, it's the kind of thing you need to, you need to have practice, and not necessarily like oh, in you know this session's over, 
we're all expert critical appraisers yeah. now. Um, and, and, and I mean, to that end, even it depends on the topic you're looking at, right? Yeah. So like that article that we spotted, it's like they use the University of Manitoba search engine. That's our uh, jam. We we know <laughs> we know searching, right? Um, at the University, at of Manitoba. Manitoba. <laughs> University of Manitoba. Other people will read that and go, oh yeah, great, sounds good. Yeah. Just because it's not their area of expertise, right? So I mean, you gotta cut yourself a little bit of slack. Um, but we hope that um, you feel more informed um, there's uh, a few, you know, things you can pull out of your pocket when you need to. And we hope to, okay, so good. People are feeling pretty good. Excellent. And um, we know too that, uh, you know, you'll feel great leaving today's session. <laughs> you'll read some headlines and go like, you know, great, inaccurate, no. But then in six months from now, you'll be presented with, you know, a whole list of titles and abstracts or maybe a whole, you know, 25, a stack of 25 um, peer-reviewed articles that you need to like wade through and determine, mm -hmm. should we be changing our regional policy? Should we be doing things different here? You know, yeah. should we be using iodine to do sterilizing or should we not? And when you're presented with those things, then you're like, oh gosh, I remember nothing of what they told me. <laughs> what are those tools again? That's why we're sending you the slides. That's why we're sending you the handouts. You can come back to these things. And like Christine says, it's um, helpful to go through. So I know around here we have, it's tomorrow actually, a journal club. And so we read through articles, you know, once a month or so, and, um, and we go through a critical appraisal checklist just to really help us go through those steps, right? It's a, it's a tool, critical appraisal. Um, yeah, so we're available. That was everything that we have prepared to present. We're available now for any questions that you might have. And if you think, I mean, you're welcome to ask them now. Um, you're welcome to send them in to us anytime. We're happy to, to help. Yeah, so we can we can pause for a bit and give you a chance if you wanted to type some things in the question box. Um, yeah, and, and like Orby said, you know, there's there's levels of critical appraisal. It's not it's not it's not all, you know, pull out a checklist and, and yeah. yeah. So I mean, grain of, grain of salt, right? Yeah. Like you gotta you gotta understand that we're not trying to make you think that that's the case. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes too, um, all the information that you might have on a certain. Um, I know once we had this uh, question about health fairs and whether mm -hmm. you know public health units when they went out and had sort of health fairs or were it, like had public displays basically, and whether that actually changed people's behaviors. Well, that's a really complex, nuanced yeah. kind of question. And so I know that they had systematically then went through the literature we provided, but it was often like case studies. And mm -hmm. I mean, there was no definitive, like, yes, this changes public behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and you might just go, okay, well, we have some resources and some time in this event. We might go and try this and maybe it won't change people's behavior, but we feel that it's, a, you know, there's many other reasons why you might want to do that so just because all the evidence you have you know maybe isn't meeting your threshold of unbiased and um, valid kind of thing you still might it still might inform you or influence you in a certain way okay, okay seeing no questions um we might sign off for today thank you so much for joining us and uh, we look forward to hearing your feedback Bye.